Morning, guys. Welcome to Coffee Chat. Mmm. What an absolutely gorgeous morning it is. I mean, it is still, it's calm. Got the birds chirping there in the background. It is just so sweet. And it is Friday. And of course, Friday means it's a weekend. Weekends are for friends and for family. And this weekend is an extra special one for us because Judy and I are going to the first ever XRP conference in Vegas. And we really can't wait. It is going to be something just to be able to meet up with a whole bunch of great folks and really celebrate this community. And on top of that, guys, we plan on doing a bunch of shorts so that we can share it with you. And if you, any of you are going and you're going to be there, I sure hope we get to bump into one another and get a chance to rub shoulders and just kind of really celebrate together. It's going to be fantastic. Well, guys, the article that I was reading this morning is really telltale and in quite an interesting way because it's not something that we would normally think of when we're thinking of the global economy. But this one had come out about the world's largest sh shipping container company, Merckx. And what they've done is they said, hey, look, we are seeing a major, major downturn in the utilization of all these shipping containers, which is really showing what's coming down the road for this economy and a big, big slowdown. Now, when you think of shipping containers, obviously we're talking about manufactured goods and stuff being shipped all around the world. Well, when they say, hey, there is a downturn, in fact, it was something like a 56% drop. When there is a downturn in the utilization of those shipping containers, obviously that means that there's not as much, you know, call demand for products and manufacturers aren't manufacturing the goods as much either, which obviously means that, hey, all the supplies that would go to those manufacturers to create those goods, well, they're not orders either. And all the employees and da 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 and it's just that domino effect. And what we're really seeing is a major contraction on a global level with respect to the economy. And here, you know, you got all these politicians saying, well, we're not quite in a recession yet, but maybe we will be. I mean, come on, we have been in a major recession for quite some time. And when they come out with the inflation numbers and telling us, oh, inflation is really not that bad, yet people are seeing year over year increases on various things like their insurances and stuff like that, over 100% more than double. In fact, on our house insurance here, I'll tell you what, the first quote that we got was like three times as much as it was the last year. And our car insurance, that went up over 50% year over year. Not to mention, hey, the cost of goods and groceries and stuff like that. And yeah, we've seen gas come down a little bit. That's true. But in all these other areas, it has just been going up, up, up. So in my view, it's like, hey, I don't take the, I don't really buy the narrative that inflation is genuinely dropping to any you know significant drops because the cost of living has gone up so much and yet wages haven't kept up with that, have they? Have they? I mean, you just talk to the folks out there that are actually going every day into work and doing that. And if it costs them more or less, do, ask yourselves guys, do you have more money than you did last year or do you have less? Are you still in the same boat or are you further down in the hole because of it? And I think for a lot of people, there's a big struggle going on. And this is something that, you know, we really have to pay attention to in a big way because when you're talking about all these fiscal economic policies that they're coming out with, I mean, there you got Janet Yellen saying, hey, we got to raise the debt ceiling. Basically, wouldn't that be great if you're, if you're way out of, uh, you know, um, liquidity crunch when you don't have enough money? Oh, we'll just go deeper in debt, deeper in debt, deeper in debt. Never, ever thinking of the payday down the road. Well, that is what, you know, the governments are doing around the world. And they're just, you know what, what ends up happening there, guys, is hyperinflation comes along, doesn't it? And that is literally the government reaching right into your jeans and pulling out monies by the fistful by destroying the purchasing power of your dollars. And that is exactly what's going on. And it's absolutely obscene. They know very well what they're doing. 
And then what they try to do is they come on and then they tack on these higher interest rates. I mean, they just raised it by 25 basis points, knowing that you've got regional banks out there that are under significant pressure, and this is going to cause them to completely implode. And I think that's exactly what they want. It's a controlled demolition that's going on here so that they can move us into a new digital economy with absolutely zero doubt. In fact, most there's a lot of people out there that are starting to come to and say, hey, look, what's going on here? Because it does not make, it doesn't even pass the common sense test, does it? I mean, when you and I look at that, when we think, oh, our, our way out of debt is just to get into more debt. I mean, does that make any sense? No, of course it doesn't. But when you're talking about central banks that can just turn on a printing press at will, hey, that's all a central bank can do is issue debt. You take away the power of the Federal Reserve to issue one dollar and it's game over right there. I'll tell you that. But for you and I, this is where we have to be very wise and look down the road. Guys, when you're going to see a supply shock, I mean, with a lot of goods that we have now, you're going to see a major supply shock. And why is that? Of course, because a lot of goods come in from overseas and you're seeing a massive, massive reduction in shipping container usage means that the manufacturing is down. Think about that. Are there things that you need in your household? Are there things that you should be putting aside, you know, buying a few extra, you know, because, hey, look, down the road, you're going to see a massive price increase on those things. Yeah, Jerome Powell literally coming out there saying, hey, get prepared for hyperinflation. Imagine that. Imagine the Federal Reserve, the head of the Federal Reserve coming out and saying, get prepared for hyperinflation. Wow, that says volumes right there. And the DXY, you're watching the dollar index absolutely tumble. And why is that? Well, the attack against the dollar is on like crazy around the world. And we have lost this petrodollar status. We've lost it. The way I look at it, petrodollar is already dead. We just haven't had the funeral yet. That is genuinely how I'm looking at it. But boy, you know, you get this information and you think, yeah, 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 because we haven't faced the reality of it. But wait and see when you go to the store one day and it's three times the price for a bottle of shampoo than what it used to be before or stuff like that. That's why you pay attention. You know, you kind of look down the road of, hey, OK, so what's the consequence of, of, of not having this, this much shipping and all this and that? What would it really look like if we we're, you know, a global recession or even a depression in that capacity? What would be the things my family would really miss if they couldn't have? And that's where you have to start thinking. And that's the benefit of being, uh, you know, prepared. Look, it's like this. We all have car insurance and things like that, but we hope we never have to use it, obviously. But we have it there in case that, you know, eventuality comes. Well, that's the same thing as having a little bit more stocked up, a little bit more food, a little bit more of the things that you normally use. It's not that you ever want to face a crisis where you're absolutely pressured into having, but boy, I'll tell you, gives you a great peace of mind to have it there in the cupboard if it ever comes time that you really, really need it. And so I would just say, think about it in that capacity and prepare. Now, with respect to this digital asset space, I'm telling you, when you watch the dollar, because there is a very, very close reverse correlation, isn't there, between the DXY and this space. As the dollar index goes down and starts collapsing, you watch and see if you don't watch Bitcoin and all these other digital assets, a great many of them start to genuinely appreciate in big, big ways. Now, for XRP, we start to get that legal clarity coming out and we get a decision in this uh, in this SEC versus you know Ripple lawsuit, and then on top of that, you're watching the reverse correlation to the. I think it's going to be something else. And guys, that's where you and I are just going to feel so so grateful and so so blessed that we really got into this space as early as we did. I genuinely believe that. Well, anyway, guys, I'll tell you what, I sure hope you're going to have a fantastic Friday, a fantastic weekend. And look, if, if you're going to be there at that XRP Vegas conference, boy, I'll tell you what, I would sure love to meet you. So look me up. I'll be out there. Judy and I will be out there. And hey, we're looking forward to connecting with a lot of folks. So I'll tell you what, we do hope to have a video later on tonight. But until then, guys, I sure hope you have a fantastic Friday and have a fantastic weekend and take care.